You know, my, my salsa instructor is the guy inside that video that's playing the, the, the drum. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. This is George Palio, ladies and gentlemen. What? In my house. Because he's half Puerto Rican? I'm half Cuban. I'm half Cuban. And we're going to Cuba, baby. We're going to go to Al Capone's house in Matanza. It's right on the beach. And they turn it into a restaurant. No so, kidding. You literally go snorkel, scuba dive, do whatever you're going to do right on the beach. And uh, it's in Veradero. Veradero. Verda, yeah, Veradero. I think somewhere like that. But it's in Matanza. It's, um, and it's Al Capone's old house. It's pretty dope. And then okay. now, now it's a restaurant. So swim and eat where Al Capone used to swim and eat. Really? Yeah. That's it, man. You're good, it. man. So if you're joining us. My name is Money Smart Guy, Matt Zappala, host of the Money Smart Show, co-owner of PHP Agency Chairman's Council. And today I've got a very special guest because we're talking today about smashing limiting beliefs that sabotage us to increase our net worth, uh, increase our net, yeah, net worth, increase our self-worth. And I'm also here with Chairman's Council of PHP Agency, Mr. George Palayo, hailing out of Tarzana, California, man. So, brother. Welcome to the show, man. Welcome to my Wednesday afternoon broadcast. Great to be on the show, man, with uh, Money Smart Guy. I'm excited, brother. Very excited. Well, I, 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 I uh, was uh, asked this question multiple times last night. Uh, by the way, Derek Malila says, get some fire roasted plantains from Cuba. Sure, that sounds, that sounds like a plan, man. What's going on, Doc Malulis? He's a, he's a Navy veteran corpsman out of the Rancho Cucamonga office under the Evans. So, Hi. Thank you for your service. Lisa, Lisa Hutchins Holloway, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Um, before I jump into our topic today, which is getting rid of limiting beliefs that sabotage our success and overcoming a low identity, I just want to let you guys know we are giving something. I'm, again, I'm in a giving mood. And the book of the month is Little Red Book of Selling by Jeffrey Gitmer. And if you share this video, I'm going to send this video to you. I, I got my man Brandon. Say hi, Brandon. What's going on? Brandon's moderating. Win this contest. Get the book. So if you share, if you share this the most on people's timelines, you share this in groups you're a part of, spreading the message of overcoming limiting beliefs that sabotage our success. Now, I don't care if you're in the insurance industry. I don't care if you're an architect, lawyer, doctor, you're self-employed, aspiring entrepreneur, veteran entrepreneur, or in George's case, a Latino entrepreneur. What's up? <laughs> you got to listen to this. Sean DeVee, what's going on, brother? So, uh, George, man, obviously I have had the pleasure of getting to know you, man, in the last three years. It's an honor for me to be able to say that you're a fellow chairman's council, even more of an honor to tell the world that you and I are business partners uh, of the agency. And uh, guys, this guy not only started a business at 18, 18, 19 years old, but he was also a co-founder of PHP Agency. And last week we had uh, Gaetan on talking about uh, a competing company wanting to smash us with even more limiting beliefs when you guys first started PHP Agency. But... Uh, by, by the way, I love your bookcase in the back. Can you show everybody real quick the bookcase? I'm going to expand this just so we can see your side of the uh, side of the room. So our mentor, Patrick Bedave, has got Reed, a uh, custom-made Reed bookcase behind him. What do you have behind you? So we started a team name years ago, and it was called Unity. So we have a Unity bookcase. Yeah. Yep, yep. Love it, bro. You and – that suck if the guy accidentally uh, mis uh, misspelled it, right? <laughs> Unti. You missed the I. Unti. <laughs> then we would come up with it's an acronym for, you know, until uh, tomorrow, never, you know, whatever, something. We'd come up with something, man. We'd always spin it. You know what I mean? Always. Talk, talk about what, what inspired your team name, bro. I, I mean, I've heard you guys, you know, you, 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 you. Oh, that's one of my favorite uh, chants in our conventions. But uh, how'd, you, how'd you come across with a team name? 
unity. You know, I'd always see these pictures of like, I, I didn't have a big family. And so I wanted, I wanted to have a big family. Um, and, and so when we were naming the team, I was like, man, what's something that we want this team to stand for? If there's one thing we want it to stand for. And I think that's important, you know, in figuring out like when you're naming a team or you're naming a company or you're naming an organization, what do you want it to stand for? And it's got to have something that has meaning to you. Yep. Well, for me, whatever the values of the leader are become the values of the team or they'll, you either attract that. Um, and so I was like, so what do we want to attract? What's the most important thing in my life? And it's family. And so not having a big family, I said, you know what? You know why? Because we're united. And when a family, when, a, when an organization is united, nothing can can tear them apart. So I said, you know, we're going to name the team Unity. And that's what we've done. And uh, we now have around 25 offices across the country. And last month, uh, the team blew up, beat our, our prior best. So Love it's, it. uh, and we do more when we're united as people, when we're all on the same page. So um, together united, we're better. Unity team. Yeah, together we're better. So, so uh, for those of you guys uh, that don't know George Palayo, um, the reason why I had him come on this uh, live stream today, this podcast today, is because he started the business as a teenager. There was a server at Olive Garden. And you just heard him say he didn't really have a large family, um, which is kind of odd for a Latino family, uh, especially being Puerto Rican and Cuban. So I guess you probably had, there in California, you had to assimilate to become Mexican. <laughs> Mexicano. But, but, uh, so let's, let's talk about that. You're 18, 19 years old. Why, you know, you decided to do some some crazy things in terms of starting a business. So what type of pushback or, or things that you were raised with that were initially sabotaging you along the way? Uh, initially sabotaging me. I grew up, <clears throat> I grew up with my mom was always very positive and very loving. My dad was always a great dad as a provider, but I never really had... Um, I was never, I was never around a mentor that helped me understand that if you put in more effort, you'll be more successful, that more effort equals more success. And, and so I just thought naturally people were, you were either naturally meant to do that. Like I really, really actually believe like the people that were good at sports, they were just naturally meant to be better or the people that got better grades were naturally meant to be smarter. And you'd be surprised, like, and I know you understand it, Matt, but for the people watching, You'd be surprised with how many people really just don't think that they're winners um, because they connect who they are now to who they, you know, who they can be. And so I just didn't connect myself to being a winner. Um, I really didn't. I didn't think I could. I just thought I wasn't meant to. You know, I'm not I wasn't I wasn't gifted in that way. And um, <clears throat> it wasn't until I found the business and years later of just working really hard, figured out that. You know, you 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 work in anything you win in anything you work at. Um, and so I think my belief was very limited when I first got started. Um, Patrick talked today about, I think, Andre, Andre Ingram. Was that the, the message in the morning yeah. and how he took 10 years to finally become a rookie in the NBA? And it took us 10 years to become a chairman in PHP. And you got people like Del Toro's that did it in four years, you know. And they've done it quicker. And so for me, I didn't have a really high belief in myself. Um, so the, what I t would tell myself thousands of times, I've said this, if you're a good person and you work hard and you improve, God's going to bless you. And, um, and so I really believe that. So I think my own belief system, I had limiting beliefs. Um, I didn't have a lot of associations around me that were very positive and very successful for them to rub off on me. And uh, and then lastly, when I first got started in business, you know, a lot of skepticism. Obviously, people are skeptical in, in things that they don't believe in themselves is possible for themselves. So, you know, people pass on that skepticism to you and pass on their opinions to you. And for most people, they, their opinions become your opinions and um, and you end up, you know, quitting or falling short. So those are the three different things. People's belief system that the business didn't work my own belief system and a lack of associations around me to, to help me, to help battle my own thoughts. When you were 18, 19 years old, now, what was your initial motivations to start your own business? And lots of times people say, I want to help people, I want to make money, I want to fire my boss. What was your initial 35,000 feet in the air 
initial dreams and aspirations? I think pain, you know, the, the whole goes back to pain and pleasure and why everybody does things is because they want to gain pleasure and avoid pain. For me, a lack of money. I'm in Austin and I prospect this girl and, um, and we have a conference call and it's on a Sunday. And she says, I just want you to know that after I told her what we did, she's like, money doesn't control me. I don't let it define me. Da, 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 da. And I said, listen, if you don't control money, money controls you. So that's bullshit. Like right off the bat, 100% you're controlled by money if you don't control it. And so I saw what not having money did. Like you don't have choices. Lack of money equals lack of choices. It's very simple. Yeah, like um, what, world you, what world do you live in? <laughs> la yeah. la la. Yep. Yeah. And um, and so yeah, it was lack. Of, it was a lot of pain. I saw just you know stress. I connected stress to money. I connected lack of options to lack of money. I connected money to as a reason for a lot of the things that cause unhappiness. Um, in my parents' life with each other. And I saw two people that loved each other that were best friends at one point that decided to get married and raise a family and, and live the rest of their lives together. I saw them almost get torn apart over money. And I realized, you know, what money or lack of it can do to people. And so I just said, you know, I got to go make some money. And I started working when I was like 13 years old, 12 years old. And and ever since then, you know, I've always worked to to have money because I never wanted to, to not have it and stress out and struggle. and. Yeah. Um, so the pain, the pain of not having it, the pain of seeing people fight over money, the pain of, you know, seeing my parents almost get divorced over money, the pain of the stress it caused them. Like, I just wanted to take all that pain away from them. And so I figured, you know, if I can go work and I can go become successful, then I can take care of them financially and, and take away the pain. Um, and then I wanted things I want, you know, we, we live, we get one time on planet earth, man. And I want to see every country in the world. Um, I want to experience culture. I want to experience history. I want to learn. I want to go see it. I don't want to be controlled by money. What were some of the uh, limiting beliefs you had with money growing up? Because, you know, there's really a fear of failure or a fear of success sometimes we have to battle with. You know, and, and the, the irony behind all this is people say, man, I want to be free financially, but how much money do you want to make? 60 grand. 60 grand. There ain't no freaking financial freedom. And then you hit 60 grand and then you realize that's not free at all. And then I want to be financially free. And then they hit 100 grand if they're lucky. Right. And then that's not enough. So, you know, what was, what was, what do you think was driving you the most? Was it the fear of failure or the fear of success? When I was, when I, what drove me the most, the fear of failure was definitely more of my motivation. Yeah. 100%. Somebody said a long time ago that most people overestimate what they can do in a short amount of time, but underestimate what they can do in the long term. And I think that's what happened to me. But the fear of failure uh, was it was constantly a motivator. Because once once somebody knows that there's a better way, like once somebody knows that they should be managing their time, once somebody knows that you know, they should be working harder, they should be disciplined, they should be reading, they should be improving, they should be consistent. Once somebody knows that, when they're not, when they don't operate in their belief system, it creates it creates conflict. And I think that that's why they say ignorance is bliss. Because when you don't know of a higher way of thinking or a higher level of being, you you know you don't know that you don't know. And it goes back to it goes back to the the three classes of people: the the lower class, not lower class people, but in income, lower income, middle income, and world you know upper income or world class, middle class, and the poverty class. And it says that the poverty class is always congruent with their beliefs <clears throat> because they don't believe anything is possible, so they don't try. The world class believes it's possible, so they try and they do and they succeed. But it's the middle class, it's the most incongruent class in America because they know that a higher level exists, yet they don't take the action to, to, to go attain it. And so they're the most incongruent with their awareness. And I think I became aware that it was possible by seeing other people around me winning so much that when I wasn't winning, it created a, a, a when I wasn't working, not that I wasn't winning, because if I was working, but I wasn't winning, I at least had faith that I was going to win one day. But when I wasn't winning and I wasn't working, it created a lot of stress and anxiety inside of me um, where I felt like a guilt. And it's kind of like good voice, bad voice, like Pat talks about, 
you know, where the bad voice is like, the good voice is like, man, you know, you're supposed to be at the office. You know, you're supposed to be reading. You know, you should turn the TV off. You know, you should wake up and go work out. You know, you should, that good voice is talking to me all day and you kind of don't want to hear it all the time. So you block it out with, you know, alcohol or partying or, or you know, um, other people around you that are also distracted. And, you know, you start telling yourself things like, you know what, winning isn't really everything. It's not like life's not all about success. Life's not all about making big money. And you start making statements that start to limit that voice inside of you. And what happens is you initially, you eventually quiet the voice so much that, um, that you can't hear it anymore because you've turned the volume down. But the voice is always there. Like we all know what we need to do and don't do. So I think that the not winning and the not working, that fear of like, you're not going to make it. You're not going to get it done. You know better. You should be doing this. That, that stress and anxiety, it's a sign and it's a good sign. You know, fear is a great motivator. It teaches you not to jump off the cliff because like, you'll die. You know, so fear is real. It's not all fear is, but, but that fear um, of constantly failing was a great motivator. Um, the fear of losing a competition is a great motivator. What's that other guy doing? What could I be doing? And there's a book it called, it was called what clients want. And it asked a question and it said, um, if you were competing with you, what would you do to beat yourself? And, uh, and so I would just ask myself that, like, you know, better George. So it was, I would say fear of failure. So George, I, you know, you said something very, very profound right there is the middle class, Lower, not high mindset thinking folks. I mean, look at all the information that's on YouTube. Look at all the information that's on the internet compared to where it was 10 years ago. Are people any richer today than they were 10 years ago? And both you and I both know the answer to that is no. Yep. And so, but yet all the information's out there. All the how-to videos are out there, but are people actually watching it? And so um, uh, real quick, I, I, he just actually, he just jumped on right now. Um, George, you know, it's like the pioneer new location. Um, I've got a gentleman here that uh, reached out to us online, reached out to Patrick, reached out to me on Instagram. And um, he's pioneering a new location in uh, in Memphis. And uh, I wanted him to say hi to you, man, because uh, he's looking forward to meeting you. And uh, he's heard about you. And this guy actually was challenged by Patrick back in the day to compete with you in business. So, ladies and gentlemen, oh, welcoming to the show. You. He just made eighteen thousand dollars last month from the hood of uh, of, uh, of L.A. We got Mr. Edward Musgrove. So let's bring him on here real quick. So he's coming on. Three, two, one. Boom! There he is. Hey, George. How's it going? What's up? Good looking. <laughs> How you doing, man? Dude, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be on the uh, on the uh, podcast. And George, I've been seeing you growing. I remember, man, back in the day when we were young, when I was a uh, 27, you were 21. Uh, Patrick was actually uh, uh, just uh, pushing you and uh, challenged you with me. And man, I was looking at I was looking at uh, the YouTube video and I was like, oh, my God, George went from zero to hero. And I'm still at the same place, you know, with the practice company. They're doing something special. So I had to I had to switch over to uh, some great leaders that's still in the game. Did we meet, by the way, back in the day? Because you do. Look yeah. Familiar. You was in Charlier. You was in Charlier office. You was in Charlier uh, Bay shop. You had came down and was talking to us about exactly what you were doing at the beginning. Yeah, I was the rabbit in the Bay shop at the time, yes. and we was competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was competing with each other, man. Yeah, Damn. exactly. <laughs> <Who's doing that? laughs> uh, about ten years ago. Jeez, it goes yeah. by so and, fast. Man. It everybody does. thinks George is this overnight success, right? Right. Well, so, I heard right. good. Great things about what you did, by the way, on the conference call. You spoke the other day on the conference call, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I heard what you and your wife are doing, and uh, I think that's great, man. You know, I think I think that people that have individual success, when they start, when they start, um, oh my guys are, are coming by. Uh, when they start duplicating that into other people, man, it's it's powerful. The compounding effect. I told somebody the other day. I said, how many, because I'm recruiting this guy, and I said, how many hours do you have in a day? And he's like, eight. I said, so if you got five guys, what you just did is you turn one week into one day. So you turn, you know, you turn uh, uh, one day into a week, I'm sorry. So you turn a week into a month, a month into a quarter, a quarter into a year, 
and four years, four years into 12 years and 12 years into 48 years. Like I'm like, just the compounding effect of duplication is powerful. So I'm excited that you're part of the family, man. You know, there's a reason, part of there's a reason for everything in our lives. And I'm just excited to run with you, bro. You got a good spirit. Hey, Edward, what would you make your first month with us fully licensed a point a couple months ago? What, what was your first, what was your income? 14,000. It was 14,000 our first month appointed. And then the second then month, uh, 18,000 uh, 18, and uh, some change. Nice. He's, he's nice. got a good trajectory, man. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so uh, man, I'm, I'm glad you guys connected because, listen, this is all, is all it. You know, by the way, if you guys are do, uh, just tuning in right now, you're listening to the Money Smart Show. I'm your host, Money Smart Guy. My name is Matt Sapala, but uh, it's easier just to remember Money Smart Guy. If you're tuning in right now and you're sharing this, <laughs> broadcast on Facebook, I'm going to tally up the most shares that you have. If, if you've got the most shares in groups and people's timelines, we're going to give you this book from my office to yours. Uh, Brandon here is going to tally up all the people who shared it the most. We're going to ask you for the ad, the winner. We're going to ask you for addresses. We're going to give this book, book to you, Little Red Book of Sales. So, uh, Edward, let me ask you that question because, bro, you, you uh, made your money selling newspapers door to door, door knocking. I mean, I, mean uh, I, I want to see your, let me see your knuckles, man. You got any calluses on your knuckles? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so, I mean, what was it like for you to be at, at, a, at a young age and and uh, door to door knocking, people slamming the door in your face? What was it like for you to say, you know what? Let me keep just quitting. So, so basically, um, as a young kid, I grew up in uh, South Central LA. Uh, my dad actually uh, stayed in South Central, uh, I mean, Watts actually. And my mom stayed in South Central LA, so I, I went back and forth with that, and I uh, I always questioned myself and was wondering, you know, how can I go to the next level? So uh, fast forwarding uh, out of high school, um, I actually uh, went to school in Texas, and I was on a partial football scholarship, and uh, I, we was we I was in need of paying rent for the dorms because they were paying for school, I had to pay for my own my own rent. So I looked, I reached out to one of my guys that was on the football team. And he introduced me to newspaper sales. Uh, so basically, uh, what, what I was working for, I was working for the Houston Chronicle. And uh, at first, it was the door knocking sales. Um, and I got out of that industry. And basically, I got into the newspaper sales. And we were selling newspaper subscriptions inside of grocery stores. Yeah. So we had the, like a little four by two kiosk table. I was That was my first sales job ever. I was scared as all get out, embarrassed, you know, uh, these people I don't know. But it, it, it definitely made me who I am today. And uh, I'm, I was just thankful um, of being uh, starting off sales. Uh, that was my first job. I, I was making like roughly like six hundred, seven hundred dollars a week. It started increasing. And um, fast forward, I. Is it must be coming? Kind of, George, you still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, combined income uh, with my wife uh, when I moved up the ladder into a regional status where I was duplicating and traveling. But the biggest challenge was I was building someone else's business. And uh, what I was making monthly, he started making yearly. And we actually started at the same start line. And uh, I wasn't growing. And I and I wanted to, to do something big and change the lives of my family. And uh, I would kept on going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in the insurance industry. But I just wasn't getting that guidance I needed because I didn't want to be a personal producer anymore because that's what I did on my own pen. Uh, 400, half a million thousand a year uh, selling newspapers. I wanted to build a business where I can make that same income, but but with others. George, you know, uh, you've coached a lot of people over the last 10 plus years now. And uh, I, I remember, remember the uh, the national RV tour we did a couple of years ago? Yes, sir. And and I remember this because the RV, so we're coming down to your guys' neck of the woods which was Hollywood, uh, our, uh, yeah, the, uh, Universal, was that what the, what you host again? The, right next to Universal Studios. The Sheraton, right? Universal Sheraton. So you guys hosted it. We're coming in our RV. You guys make us feel like rock stars. And our faces, because you, you were one of the speakers on the tour too as well, you came out to Chicago, which we really appreciate. And, and our faces were inside this whole entire RV. And um, I remember we, we got a flat tire. And we go to... I just because we, we, we couldn't fill up an RV tire at a normal gas station. So we went to an, uh, uh, adjust tires. And the guy, he's filling it up and he's, and he's looking at the RV. 
is like, oh my gosh. And then what's going on? And then we're, we're, we're paying him, you know, for you're tipping him, whatever, paying him for filling up our flattened tire. He goes, I know that guy, George. He, uh, he, uh, I worked with him about five, six years ago and I never went back. And I'm like, yeah, and you're still working at Just Tires. And George kept on the same path and he's on the side of an RV touring the country as a national speaker talking about vote 1099 entrepreneurship. So George, I'm just curious, has anybody that you've coached and mentored who quit in the last 10 plus years of you coaching them, have they ever done anything significant after quitting, making a two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a month income, or two thousand four hundred thousand dollars a year a year income? No, no, zero, nobody. You know, I have people. <clears throat> I've had people that have quit for all kinds of reasons, Matt. I've had people that they quit when they go through family crisis. My mom had cancer when I was running to become a broker, and. Uh, mm. And I, I recruited this girl the other day, and she's like, you know, I'm getting wrist surgery. I may have to get surgery on my wrist. She just had, like, a broken wrist. And she's like, so, I'll, 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 you know, maybe I'll come do this when we finish. And I asked her a question. I said, can I be direct with you? She's like, okay. I said, do you have a mentor? And she's like, I said, outside of your pastor and your, your parents, like, do you have a mentor? Um, and she's like, no. And I said, let me tell you, my mom went through cancer. She lost her breast. She went through chemo. She's getting surgery. She's going through all this stuff. She's got tubes from here to drain the fluid. She's got no hair, and she's going back. She puts on a wig, and she goes back to work because she had to, to pay for her job, had to pay for the health insurance so that she can keep getting better because she had a 12-year-old kid. She was married. She had a family. She was the leader of the family, and, um, and I said, I saw something that my mom never said to me. She said it, but I didn't have to hear her say it. I saw her do it. And I said, that's not to make excuses. So if a woman with no hair, with bags on her arms, going through chemo can go back to work and bust it, you with a little wrist broken, I'm sorry, by the way, but there's never a good time to start. If it's not your health, it's going to be a finance. If it's not family, it's going to be fa uh, a finance. It's going to be family. It's going to be some, something's going to come up and you're going to use that as an excuse in your life why you can't win. So I don't care if you join or not today. I don't care if you get started with this or not, but you got to understand, I'm going to be direct with you. There's never going to be a good time to start. So I don't care if you get started or not. I don't even care if you do this business. Your mindset is the thing that needs the biggest work. And she looks at me. She's like, I want to do this. Now, uh -huh. she now she quit, by the way. She 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 we'll see if she comes back or not. But I but for that moment, her mindset was elevated. And the challenge is that when we're around people that are, you know, that get us to elevate our thinking if we don't consistently put action or effort or personal development into that, we're going to go right back to where our current level of thinking was. That's why they say people operate at the, at the level, at the temperature level that they feel comfortable at, you know? So if you feel comfortable at 72, the moment life gets to 76 or 78 or 80, you start to cool down because it's above your comfort, like your real, your real ex expectations and standards. And the moment life gets to 60, you're like, Oh shit, this is not going well. Let me, let me work harder. And what I realized is I had to increase where I my, my expectations and my standards. But most people, when they get around us and then they get out of this environment, if they're not being pushed and held accountable, which I still need accountability. We get it every Tuesday on our dream team call. You know, if I don't get that accountability and I don't have that standard and that vision, that dream constantly from somebody that's ahead of me, if I'm not around that, I settle. And so I've had people that quit like I'm going to go, you know, really serve God. And I'm like, if you're really going to do that, do it at 100 percent. If you're going to use that, by the way, you freaking you better go do 100 percent, man. Give your best. And you know what? They don't. They end up going getting a part time job. Maybe they serve one service a week and they use their faith as a reason why they're quitting or their family or their health or whatever. And uh, this man told me he had seven kids. He was single dad. He quit. And he says, George, and I met him years later. And he says, I use my whys as my why nots. Yeah. You nice. know. Yeah. And so, no, I've never seen anybody that's left the business go be more successful by themselves than around a group of mentors and people that are challenging them to be better in our environment. And, and this just, and by the way, that's not saying we're the end all be all for everybody. No. It's, it, what, what George mentioned there was a mindset. If you want to get ahead financially, you want to break loose, are you working on your mindset? Musgrove, remember when you first came on, bro? And you're, yes, you're I did. Bit of a panic mode a little bit and I was I was I was very direct with you bro I, you know, I was like bro I want to see how this guy takes some coaching um, because for a lot of people their ego would have been hurt 
the way I came across you, but you didn't allow your pride and your ego to get the better of you and say, you know what, screw this guy. So, so how is it for you, Musgrove, coming here, getting direct coaching from a mentor, and then how, how is that translated into your mindset and obviously translated into your cash? Well, it, I really think someone definitely has to be accountable to, to someone uh, to push you to the next level. Um, my biggest challenge when I was communicating with you, you hit it on the dot and you was like, why? I mean, why your self-esteem is so low? And it was to the point that my cash flow was gone. And at first I had the, the ability, if I didn't win in this arena, to bounce back and go back to the newspaper. But when I sat down and talked to you, I dived all in. Uh, as you know, you know, we pawned the Rolexes. Uh, yeah. we sold, I sold some of my, my guns that I had, you know, because I went all in. And uh, based upon my back against, going against the wall and the challenge that I had uh, that you said, hey, man, wake up. You know, you're going to have to spin off of it. Stop being so robotic, man. Do what it takes. It's just it was a trigger in my mindset that hit and said, I'm being a little pee. I'm being a big old pussy. You know what I mean? I really need to step it up and win for my family. And if I if I chose this arena, I'm not quitting. I'm not going to be one of those guys that go to all these different type of opportunities. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to fight for whatever I deserve and my family deserve and be that leader person that I am and stand in alignment with you. And, and it just was a switch. I, I remember I was in the parking lot at 10, 10 p.m. at night at a, at a uh, uh, Buffalo. I was at Buffalo Wild, no Hooters. I was at Hooters and I'll call myself going to prospect. And uh, I was just sitting in the car and I was scared, man. And that toughness right there, that's like a father figure type of pushness. It just do something to you when you're a type of competitive individual. And I'm glad you're willing to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Kudos to you, brother. Uh, Thank you. Before, before I ask the last question to these gentlemen, uh, I want to let you guys know that's watching this right now or who might be watching this replay. Again, you're watching the Money Smart Show. I'm the Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala, co-owner of PHP Agency and Chairman's Council of PHP Agency. I do this every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on Fridays, I do this with the Red Friday Veterans Edition for military veterans who are transitioning into entrepreneurship too as well. So Friday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, I do the show. I'm also giving this book, the red, Little Red uh, Book of Sales, to anybody that shares this book the most from our office to your office, if you share this the most. And um, also, I want you guys to know that this gentleman right here in the middle, the middle screen, his name is George Palayo. George, fellow co-owner, my business partner, chairman's counsel of PHP Agency. He's coming out to Chicago Next Friday, that would be April, was it April the 20th? April the 20th, if he's coming out to Chicago. He's coming out, there's some of the people he's mentoring to as well. And now uh, we're going to do this little uh, uh, ping pong effect of cross pollinations of uh, uh, him talking to, to my people, me talking to his people, but the people that uh, he's bringing over here, they had to qualify for this. It's not that just, they can just buy their way in, they actually had to take some action, meet some measurable goals in order to qualify for this. And uh, if you want to meet George Palayo here next Friday, uh, he's going to be here in Chi Town. I think, bro, I think I think uh, it's going to be warm next Friday, man. It's going to be like 60 degrees. So uh, we're, looking, <laughs> we're looking forward to seeing you in Chicago uh, next Friday, man. So uh, uh, that last question. Uh, George, what, what would you say to somebody right there right now? They just started in business, just like you did when you were 18, 19 years old. They're getting some pushback from their friends and family. They're not getting any validation from the people that they love and care about, their, their, their spouse, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, even their pastor. Because I have, I've, I've seen a lot of pastors, you know, sabotage even a lot of people in, to go into business. Right, Brandon? Uh, but uh, what would you say to somebody right now that's getting sabotaged all around them? They're not getting any positive signals. And you think that's a red flag. What would you say to that person? I, I, <clears throat> I think it takes two people. Um, this is something Jason said on a call the other day. He says it only takes two people to believe in you, you and one other person. And I think <clears throat> the sign of, of if you should listen to somebody, there's a couple signs. One, are they practicing what they're preaching? You know, I think that's a sign. Like you got to have a filter on who you listen to. Because the problem today, 
we got so much fil so much information coming in that we have a filtering issue on what do what do we actually listen to what don't we what do we give time to what don't we like today we actually have to, to, to do less is to do more. We have to eliminate, we have to focus. And so if you're gonna take advice from somebody, I really think you gotta ask yourself like, are they practicing what they're preaching? See, I was told like, you know, hey, you shouldn't smoke, but then you see the person smoking or hey, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta eat healthy. And then you see the person eating, uh, you know, something they shouldn't be eating. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to work hard, but then you see a person not working hard or you got to do this, but then they didn't go to school. Like, or you got whatever it is, people always give advice. And so I really ask myself, like, does this person practice what they're preaching? And, um, and the question, this thing, this, I heard this quote and it says, when you buy somebody's opinion, you buy their lifestyle too. Ooh, that's strong. So I started looking at certain people that were giving me advice, people that were close to me, friends, et cetera. And I started asking myself, do I want their life? And in areas where the answer is yes, I take their advice. In areas where the answer is no, I respect it. But, uh, you know, I, I look for somebody else's advice that has that area of their life the way that I want it to be. And, and for all of you on the call, that may be different. Maybe it's making a million. Maybe it's making 10 million. Maybe it's making 100 grand. Maybe it's just making an extra two grand part time. Maybe it's you losing five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Maybe it's whatever it is for you. Maybe it's reading and working on your faith or marriage or whatever it is for you. I really just think you got to get clear on what you really want. Like, what do you want? You get clear on that because you can't let somebody else's opinions become your own. Then you have no opinions and you're, you're, you know, you're swayed by everybody. And so you got to get clear on what you want and then you got to find people that are practicing that and living it out. <clears throat> and, and, and the most important thing, the pastor said this and then I'll wrap Matt, but he said this on Sunday and he said, um, I think it was Matthew in the Bible. And he said, Jesus was talking and he said, my sheep will hear me and hear my voice and come to me because they know my voice. He said, they will not, you know, listen to the, to the thieves and the robbers because they can tell my voice. And the pastor said, you know, when you get close to God, you hear his voice in your life. He says, the problem is you have too many other voices in your head. And if you're listening to all the other voices, then you can't listen to the two most important voices, which is God's voice and your voice. And so I just really believe like, be careful on who you listen to, be careful on who you're around. You may, you may, they may entertain you for now, but if they're not part of the long-term vision of your life, you got to understand that the benefit versus cost, the short-term benefit isn't worth the long-term cost on what it's costing you. And I'm grateful for, for people like you in my life and people like Patrick and people like Musgrove and people that just want to be somebody more and do something better in life and be somebody because when we're around people like that, you know, their energy and who they are become who we are. So we're a product of our environment. So get around the right people. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, man, for those of you watching the show, man, I appreciate you guys tuning into the show. One last announcement. One last announcement. One last announcement. For those of you watching the show and you happen to be in the Chicagoland area this weekend, George Palaio is coming next weekend. So you want to meet George Palaio? You'll be out here uh, on Friday. George, you'll also be on Saturday morning, right? That's right, man. We're coming to Chicago. Show that one more time, bro. We'll, we'll put it on. Matt, we're, we're taking – Matt, we're taking – and then on the bottom of it, on the bottom of it, it says uh, – what does it say? Elite squad because we're bringing around 50 people with husbands and wives combined and whatnot. We're bringing around 50 people to Chicago to come oh. learn from uh, Mr. Millionaire, Mr. Matt and Sheena, Mr. And Mrs. Millionaires, Matt and Sheena, seven-figure earners. And uh, I've been telling my guys nonstop, man. I'm like, listen, you want to learn from somebody that made a million dollars in their third year with PHP, $2 million over the last three years, 12,000 square foot, 10 marketing directors last year, MVPs of the company. Like, you want to, like – a conversation like that changed my freaking life. And so we have so many people that are fighting till midnight uh, to be a part of it, to go get mentorship from you, uh, to get mentorship from your wife. And we're spending quite a bit of money uh, uh, to come see you guys because the money can be made back, but the mentorship is invaluable, man. The mentorship is invaluable. So, Matt, um, we are so 
excited, man. To like just excited, like honestly humble, excited, grateful, hungry, coming to learn from you, including myself. Um, and my team this Saturday. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the agents. I'm looking forward to seeing who qualifies, by the way. Hey, you, listen, listen, you, you got to qualify. You got to qualify for that elite meeting. And I know our guys have that and you have, you have your own, but you got to qualify for that. Cause we could be one conversation that we have that you hear something that you repeat the rest of your life and it changes your life. So, and then if you're a guest and you're watching this or a potential agent, uh, man, get in contact with Matt and Sheena Sapala. Because uh, we're, we're flying all the way from, from the West Coast to, to out to the East Coast to come learn from them. And if you're in that area, I would tell you there's nothing more valuable outside of God and family than a mentor. And uh, we're excited to come see you, brother. Definitely. 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 I'm going to spin, I'm gonna spin off, off of that. that. Like, like definitely, definitely, definitely people have to understand that I have been in the same industry, the same platform that both of you guys have been in. And I've been here with that company on and off for 10 years. And you got guys that come in to the family of PHP and they run and, and they're on a whole nother level. So even though people are trying to get into the same industry we are, they got to definitely know you have to be in the right platform and having a strong leader like Matt and like all of us, George Palaio, Gina, you definitely want to have a right mentor in that particular platform if you want to succeed in the next level. And George is a prime example of that. Um, I remember George when he was, I think you were 20, George, and, and you were already at SMD. And I was actually, uh, uh, I was actually uh, going, I was actually uh, a senior associate. And now 10 years later, you're at the top of the company, you know, you having your dream life and I'm still fighting to get to that next level because now I'm in the right, the right atmosphere and the, the right energy and the right leadership. So I'm just thankful, man. Thankful that I have Matt and Sheena uh, to, to mentor and push us. And guys, if you're looking to get into something, something that's going to change your life and be in that right platform, you definitely want to make sure you have the right leadership and PHP is where it's at. But, and, and Matt, I'll say this to Musgrove. You're going to do more in the next 12, 18 months than you did in the last 10 years, bro. I'm so freaking excited for you. You have no idea. Like, you know, but everything that you initially wanted when you first got started in the industry, because we all remember that first meeting where we had those dreams, you're about to do that, dude. You're about to be one of the next seven figure earners in the company and be a face for the company. And so I don't think there's accidents or mistakes. I do think things happen. Um, so not everything happens on purpose, but everything has purpose in it. And I think there's a purpose on you being here, man. And I'm just excited for the blessings that are going to come your way by you being a part of the family, dude. So looking forward to it, bro. Give me the chills, man. Thanks. And my hair stand up. George, by the way, side note, you were an insurance broker already, building a team, running an agency at 20 years old? Yeah, I got started when I was 19. I met Patrick. I walked into a room. I saw this Armenian Assyrian dude with two veins popping out his head. <laughs> he like, Listen, everybody. And he was intense, man. He was yelling and screaming. And I was like, I don't know what the hell is happening, but I want to be around that guy. I was like, I'm just going to freaking hold on to that coattail wherever that dude goes I'm running with that dude, bro. And uh, honestly, I swear to God, it was my first time in my life, June 15th of 2005, my first time in my entire life ever being inspired. Do you have any old video of Patrick back when he was 10 years ago? Can you dig some up? Videos of Patrick? I have a couple of photos, but videos of Pat? No. We'd have to <laughs> bribe Mario to find those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So awesome. Thank you. Good deal. Well, gentlemen, you've, you've been awesome. Um, I got one last announcement. I'm going to let you guys go because now you guys got business to run. But for those of you that's watching right now, I got one announcement for this weekend. But uh, uh, George Palayo, thank you so much for being part of the show, man. Thanks for creating so much value. Uh, thanks for investing in your business. Thanks for starting PHP Agency. For guys like myself, my wife, Ed Musgrove can come in here on this platform that you helped create and co-found, we can do something big and special. Yeah, thanks for sticking it out when it's uncomfortable, when you guys are broke, the guys are we're back to push against the law, man. I forever am grateful for you guys building and creating and founding HP Agency. Thanks, brother. Grateful to you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank example. Musgrove, Grove. Peace out, bro. We'll talk later, All man. Right, All right, man. So for those of you guys staying out with me, I got one last announcement. This weekend, if you're in the Chicagoland area, if you are in Chicago this weekend, this Saturday, what's the date, brother? April 14th. Yes. This April 14th, uh, if you want to meet 
myself, if you want to meet my wife, if you want to meet this conglomeration of entrepreneurs, masterminding, building a business together, like a lot of stories that you, hear, you keep hearing around Chicago, uh, you know, uh, my story has been featured in Huffington Post. I've been featured in Military.com magazine. I've been featured in different publications, featured on Fox, different radio. But why entrepreneurship is changing our lives because we're teaching for enterprise. We're teaching not just the wow, but we're teaching the how in the insurance industry. If you want to find out those details, not only could you visit with us this coming Saturday here in the Chicagoland area in a suburb called Oak Brook, but guess who is also coming in town? You're not going to believe it. But the CEO of PHP Agency is coming into town this Saturday. Patrick Bet David, host of the number one channel on YouTube for entrepreneurs, over 600, I think 630,000, yep. over 630,000 subscribers on YouTube is coming into town this Saturday. And if you would like to come into our office in Oprah, at this brand new 12,000 square foot office, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago, send us a message. We'll put you on a guest list. We'll let you know whether or not uh, it's packed out or it's maxed out. There's, you know, there's only so many people we can fit inside a 12,000 square foot office. But Patrick Bet David is coming into town this coming Saturday. And uh, I just want to let you know, guys, his, his conversation with me, uh, when I started in December of 2014, officially started in January 2015, absolutely changed our life. And I want to be able to pay it forward and create a ve venue and create a platform so you guys can meet him too as well. Um, in addition to that, um, that evening, um, we're taking uh, one, two, three, four, we, uh, five, six. We're taking six of our top performers, top entrepreneurs that we've been grooming and mentoring that they've hit some serious numbers last month. But we're, see, we're, we're taking him to go see our guest speaker at our convention in August because guess who else is in town in Chicago? We're taking a, a trip with Patrick and David and six of our guys to go meet Kevin Hart this Saturday at the Irresponsible Tour, downtown Chicago, United Center. And if, you may not be able to come along with us, but you can live vicariously through our Instagram stories. But uh, at the very least, Kevin Hart, we get to meet him before he comes to our convention in August. By the way, we paid 450 bucks a ticket uh, for, a, for a two, three-hour show, and we're looking forward to it. Well worth the investment, uh, well worth our guys to go out there and enjoy a, a great evening because they busted their tail all last month, and we want to reward them with all their hard work. They're taking their spouses. I think one of them was taking her, uh, uh, her mom. But uh, that's the type of lifestyle that we're able to live as entrepreneurs, um, just meet great people. Uh, visit new places, get involved in uh, the, the right venues to, to meet some interesting people, some of the funniest people in the world, Kevin Hart. And uh, we're going to be seeing him this Saturday. But if you would love to meet Patrick McDavid this Saturday, send me a message, direct message me right now. We'll add you to the guest list. My staff, my assistant will call you and uh, I'll make sure and confirm with you whether or not you've been added to the guest list or not. We'll be expecting you on, on Saturday. Invitation only, uh, business casual attire to be exposed to a message of entrepreneurship. Why now? Why the insurance industry? Why should you choose sales? Why should you choose entrepreneurship? Why you should choose uh, the right platform? And uh, more importantly, why should you choose the right industry to make a lot of money and, and set yourself financially free for the rest of your life? And by the way, I'm just not talking about you know what. This is something my, life is, my wife and I have experienced the last three years under this umbrella. And I want the same for you too. Why? 90% of people out there are living paycheck to paycheck. It's not even paycheck to paycheck anymore. It's like paycheck to first breath. Get paid and then all your automatic bills get paid and you go like this <gasps> and you're broke again. And it doesn't need to be that way. So uh, Brandon, do you, want to, do you want to share them the address uh, of, our, of, of, our, of, our, of where we're going to meet this Saturday for you guys to meet uh, Patrick but David? It'll be right here at our office at 1 South 450 Summit Avenue, Suite 230. Just remember Michael Jordan. 230 in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Our face to your face, your your feet in our office this coming Saturday, meeting CEO of PHP Agency, host of the number one channel for entrepreneurs on, on YouTube, Valuetainment, host of that show, Patrick David, Patrick Bet David will be in town this Saturday. So with that being said, I'm fired up. I gotta let you guys go because I got business to run. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. We're going to tally up in the next 10 minutes who shared this video the most, who shared this live stream video the most. 
and uh, we're going to be giving you the book, Little Red Book of Selling, from our office to your house or your office, whatever you want. We'll hook you up. Thanks for building this community with us. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for spending a little time with me to help you grow your business and demolish limiting beliefs and increase your self-worth to be the entrepreneur and be financially independent the way you've always dreamed. That being said, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and this is the Money Smart Show. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. <laughs>